Hello, beautiful souls, and welcome to Cosmic Consciousness with Cassia. On this channel, we discuss all aspects of the ascension process. I have a variety of services that I offer to assist in your awakening journey, and you can find those listed in the description box below. Today, we're going to be doing a double video. We're going to be talking about the energies of the 1-1 portal, as well as the new moon in Capricorn. And we're doing these together because these are happening. The 1-1 portal is happening, of course, on January 1st, 1-1. And the new moon in Capricorn is happening on the 2nd. But these energies are very intertwined. And remember, time is not linear. So they're really, they're mixing and melding together. Together. They're complementing each other. They're strengthening each other and really uh, providing a springboard for each other's energy. So we're going to be understanding these together. And yes, I am also going to be doing a live with Pete from Empath Uprising on 1-1 on his channel. And so uh, tune in for that as well, you guys. We're going to talk about these energies a little more deeply. Uh, there's going to be, I think, probably some like question and answer opportunities. Uh, it's re it's really fun. We started uh, doing our doing our portals live and it's it's been it was really great the last time we did it. So we're going to be doing that again uh, for the 1-1. But yeah, we're, we're getting into this energy. We're going to talk about it, and then we're going to pull some cards for this video, uh, as we always do. So this 1-1 one, one energy, this energy is all about change. The 1-1 one, one portal is about the changes that we are ready to initiate in our lives, right? And so sometimes it's sort of like these forces that almost feel like they're beyond our control come in and usher in this change for us. With this portal, it's not about that kind of change. It's about the changes that we create consciously through our intention and through our focused efforts. So it's about us being that catalyst in our own lives. This energy is very masculine. And for those of you who followed along from the 1212 portal, we talked about how the energy is going to be linked all the way moving through the 3-3. And so as we move into this new year, we have the 1-1 one, one portal, which is a refining of our masculine energy. Then we have the 2-2 two, two portal, which is a refining of our feminine energy. And then we have the 3-3, three, three, where the masculine and the feminine, the 2 and the 1, combine to create that 3 energy. And we're seeing this dance going on of our masculine and our feminine all over the sky. And yes, I know the video for the Venus uh, retrograde. I'm still working on that, you guys. Uh, there's there's just been a lot going on, a lot that I'm trying to juggle right now. That video will be coming out. But in that video, we're going to talk about the journey of Venus as well as the journey of Mars. And when Venus and Mars meet, and this is going to be echoed. So we have Venus in retrograde throughout January. So as the masculine is being strengthened, we have this transformation of the feminine underway, right? And then in, um, in February, we have this beautiful dance beginning between Mars and Venus. And then we see that we see them coming together and they're going to be together throughout most of the month of March. And so it's just a really powerful echo of these portal energies when we look at what the planets are doing right now. Right. It's cycles within cycles. We see it everywhere. Right. The the um, the what's the word that I'm looking for here, you guys? Um, just the, the ways that these and the interplays of these energies. Right. We can feel them and we can see them through many different lenses. And so uh, the portals and the way that we're moving through these energies is one of those many lenses where we're seeing this dance of the masculine and the feminine, right? Of the twin flame energy, right? But we're talking about the twin flame energy within ourselves, the sacred marriage and union within ourselves and the way that each aspect of this energy is really being strengthened and transformed as we move through the first few months of 2022. So it's really powerful. And this month with the one, one, we are working with this masculine energy. Earth signs are tra traditionally considered to be feminine energies, but Capricorn energy specifically has a very masculine feel to it. And so I consider Capricorn to be a masculine energy. And when we are looking at the Cancer Capricorn axis, we are looking at Cancer as the feminine and Capricorn as the masculine, Cancer as the mother and Capricorn as the father. And remember, Capricorn is ruled by Saturn, which is like the grandfather energy. All right. So there's a lot of that masculine energy that we are working with um, 
as we work with the energy of the new moon in Capricorn and Capricorn season, of course, which is when the one, one portal happens is during Capricorn season and the one energy itself, like we said, I'm sorry if I'm jumping all over the place, you guys, that, that, uh, one energy itself being a masculine energy, being the energy of leadership, the energy of initiative, right? And in many ways, uh, initiation, being that number of the maverick, right? The game changer, the pioneer. People with a life path number of one are the people that came in to be the leaders, right? Who be, to pave the way, to be those pioneers, to be those, those, um, those game changers. And so that's the energy that we're being asked to call upon with this one, one portal. Like we said, it's a portal of change, but it's a portal about the changes that we consciously make through our own choices and decisions. It's about us taking our power back, right? Or at this point, we've, we, we've been through that process of taking it back. So I guess we have it now and it's now about using it. How do I employ that, right? How do I make a difference in the world? How do I make a difference in my own life and in the lives of those around me? So this is what we're asking ourselves as we move through this energy. What is it that I want to achieve? What are the conscious steps that I can take toward this achievement? And this is what that new moon in Capricorn is asking us as well, especially in these early degrees of Capricorn, right? Being at 12 degrees of Capricorn is it's really asking us to put into place, to begin to put into place the foundation. What is it that I'm wanting to create? What do I need to do in order to get there? And it's really asking us to look at and review our um our achievements and to look at and review the progress that we made that we've made and to look at and review what are my goals what are my intentions what are my desires and what am I doing right and is what I'm doing going to get me where I want to go and if not can I do so how can I do something else that's the energy of Capricorn and where is it and we've been feeling this since the 1010 right where is it that I'm being asked to step up into a leadership role in my own life? And this is going to look different for every single one of us. Let's see. Yeah, and so it's like this energy, right? With the 1-1, one, one, this is New Year's Day. And so traditionally, New Year's Day is all about res New Year's resolutions. But this, this new moon in Capricorn, this 1-1 one, one portal is saying, listen, resolutions are great, but where's the follow through? Don't just make a resolution. Don't just set an intention. Start taking the constructive steps to make it happen today. That is the energy. We are we are past the point of sitting back on our laurels. Like, yes, we want to be receptive. We want to allow the universe to conspire in our favor. But at the same time, we this is an action. Like, we, the, the heat is on, right, you guys? Like, the ascension is well underway. Things are shifting and changing on the planet rapidly. We are shifting and changing rapidly. And it's really a time to take action. Right. And it's and that's going to look different for different people. And that doesn't mean that we dishonor the cycles of creation. Right. There are times when we're meant to rest. But right now we're meant to act. And as we move into that two two energy, the energy of balance and duality and receptivity and that beautiful feminine energy, uh, we may we we're going to be working and practicing with the with the energy of rest and receptivity more. But right now it's about like, what is the constructive action that we can take? How do we move this thing forward, basically? And I apologize if you guys can hear the noise outside the window. I think the mic usually cancels it out pretty well. Uh, we are going to be receiving solar plexus, plexus activations during the 1-1 portal, right? That is related to our masculine energy. And so uh, we may be experiencing some symptoms with that as the solar plexus is activated. This is touching on the digestive system. This Sometimes we experience heartburn. Sometimes we experience that upset stomach, that, that ache, that pain in the stomach. There's a whole bunch of different things that can happen uh, when we receive these, these uh, solar plexus upgrades. So just be aware of that. And we may be purging as well. And so a lot of these feelings of insecurity, these feelings of low self-worth, are going to be coming to the surface. Not only with this, like remember, we've got this new moon and this 1-1 one, one portal going on, but we've also got the Venus retrograde going on on top of that, which is another area where our self-worth, our values, and the way we value ourselves is coming to the surface and where we need healing around that. 
So we're getting it from two angles right now. But with this new moon, we also have, and I want to make sure I get, yes, it's a square. So we have a square to Chiron and Chiron and Aries, the sun and the moon square in Chiron. And so that is really bringing those wounds to the surface, those wounds surrounding our empowerment, those wounds surrounding our ability to step into and utilize our masculine energy in a productive fashion. And so that's going to look different, like we always say, for different people, depending on what those specific wounds are that you're carrying, both from your own life and for your own, for your lineage. All right, but it's a really great time to transform those energies because we have a bisextile going on with Saturn and Mars. And so this is a really powerful energy, Chiron, Saturn, and Mars. And so uh, with these planets all supporting us, that Mars is very much about like, okay, so where do we take action around this, right? How do we employ the lessons that we've learned? How do, how do we take the action to heal this and to step and to move beyond this? And sometimes the action that's that needs to be taken in order to heal these wounds of empowerment is simply taking that action, right? Even if we don't feel ready, even if we're nervous, if you wait until you're not nervous to do something, you're going to be waiting a long time. All right. We, <laughs> if you're waiting for the absence of fear, you're going to be waiting for a very long time because it is very rare to feel that absence of fear before we do the thing that we're afraid of, right? Remember it. And it was 11, 11 when I said that. Remember the imagining the thing is far scarier than actually doing the thing. But we get stuck in the imagining phase and we never make it to the doing phase. If we made it to the doing phase, we would realize that what we thought was so scary is not really that scary after all. Especially after we do it a few times, right? It's all practice. We never get it perfect and we never get it done. As my friend Glenn likes to say. All right. So let's see, what else do we have here that we want to talk about with this new moon energy? Uh, so we have two planets at zero degrees of a sign during this new moon as well. So a lot of energy, right, with these new beginnings, the number one within itself, right? Um, where the winter solstice beginning, right? Capricorn season begins the winter solstice. So we just began a new season, right? We have this one, one energy, this new year energy. We have also now this energy of Jupiter re-entering Pisces and also Mercury entering Aquarius. So both of these planets are going to be at zero de degrees of those respective signs, which initiates a brand new cycle, a brand new transit of that energy. Jupiter is moving into Pisces now, and Jupiter was getting ready to move into Pisces and then went retrograde and moved back through Aquarius, right? So we spent some time with this Jupiter and Aquarius energy, and now Jupiter is back and ready to begin a full transit through the sign of Pisces. So this energy is really beautiful. Jupiter is very happy in the sign of Pisces. Pisces was a sign that Jupiter um, ruled before Neptune was discovered, right? So this is a homey sign for Pisces, or for Jupiter, rather. Jupiter can get really comfortable in this beautiful, mystical energy, this energy with no boundaries, no rules, no restrictions, where it's able to just kind of free float and expand in all the ways that it wants to expand, right? Uh, Pis Pisces is that energy of, of unity, right? So there are no boundaries. There are no restrictions. Everything is one. And so uh, we're really feeling this, this renewal of faith and this really beautiful optimistic energy as Jupiter enters and begins its transit of the sign of Pisces. So we have that, this real emphasis on faith as Jupiter enters Pisces and the mystical, the unseen, right? And that energy of the trust in the unknown and the unseen. And then we also have with Mercury entering Aquarius, this energy that is very logical and very mind focused. Remember, Aquarius is an air sign. And although Aquarius is not ruled by Mercury, uh, Mercury works well in Aquarius because Aquarius is a cerebral and mental energy. And so we do have that energy of the logic here, right? We have Jupiter and Pisces, which is very much the feminine, the intuition, the flow. And then we have Mercury and Aquarius, which is very much um, the masculine, 
right? That logical energy. But it's also the energy that likes to think outside the box. Remember, Aquarius ruled by Uranus are the mavericks. They are the game changers, which is that energy that we were talking about. And we have, I believe it's a trine to Uranus that Uranus is making to the sun and the moon during this new moon. Let me look here. Yes, I do believe it is a trine. It's, yep, it's a trine to the sun and the moon. So, yes, a lot of that energy, that energy of inventiveness, that energy of thinking bigger and better, of gaining that higher perspective. We're really looking at that higher perspective, and we're really being challenged to think beyond the parameters of whatever limitations we set for ourselves. And we're really beginning to understand how every single limitation that is presented to us, that presents itself in our path, is self-imposed. It's either something that we took on from the collective energy or from our um upbringing and agreed was true, right? Or it's something that we created ourselves. Usually it's something that we took on and agreed was true. Right. The, we grow up hearing it's only it's possible for you to go this far. And so we take that on as our truth. OK, I can progress in life, but I can only go this far. Right. It's like that kind of stuff. So this Uranus energy, this Mercury and Aquarius energy is asking us to think bigger than that. And we are going to be experiencing Mercury is uh, entering its pre-shadow period. So we're going to be feeling the, the whispers of Mercury retrograde as well. Mercury will go retrograde um, primarily in Capricorn, but it will be a little, it'll be into Aquarius and then go back into Capricorn and then, um, of course, end up back in Aquarius. Uh, so we're, we're feeling the whispers, the murmurs of that. I absolutely know that I am. And it's already been coming up in reason. So we know it's going to be one hell of a Mercury retrograde to kick off 2022. And we are going to have four in 2022. So we're, we're starting to feel that energy a little bit too. So pay attention to what's coming up because that's probably what you're going to be visiting mentally during Mercury retrograde. I'm trying to think, is there anything else that we want to talk about here in reference to the moon and in reference to the one one portal? Yes. So what we also want to talk about is the fact that we had that final square of Saturn and Uranus. And so they're they're beginning to move apart now. That square is going to start gently breaking up. But we had that final exact square, and so we're still feeling this energy as well as we move into that happened on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. So as we move, as we move into this new year, we're still feeling the effects of that. And that once again was an energy. And the reason I, I, I think it's important to bring this up is because it it really factors into that divine timing energy that we were talking about. The energy of things beginning to move forward. There was an energy of feeling stuck with that. There was an energy where we were kind of torn between our responsibilities and where it is that we wanted to go between the old and the new. And Saturn really wanted us to learn some type of lesson. Saturn wanted us to perfect some sort of skill. Saturn wanted us to spend more time in an area before we were able to move on. But Saturn and Uranus also wanted to teach us together the energy of seeing things from different perspectives. Right. And the energy of being maybe not being able to move out of a specific situation, but being able to shift that situation by shifting our perspective of it and shifting the way that we experienced it as a result, which is really interesting. And we are seeing that energy break up. So this is another area where where we may have felt stunted or like the energy was um getting a little stagnant and we couldn't move forward, we're going to begin to see the relief and the release from that. Uh, providing, of course, that we have learned what we were meant to learn from that, that situation. And wherever you have those energies in your chart is the area where you probably were feeling this energy the most. And so that's going to be different for everyone. If anyone wants to go over their transit or their natal chart, I do offer that. And so that information is in the description box below. Um, absolutely shoot me an email. I'm not going to spend more time right now looking up the degrees of Taurus that Uranus is in. I believe it, it's like 12 degrees or somewhere between 10, 10 and 12 degrees is where Uranus is. And then um, 
where Saturn in Aquarius, actually, I'll do it real quick for you guys. Why not? We're talking about it, right? Uh, so Saturn has been right around, let me find his little mark here, right around 12, of course, <laughs> they're in a square, right around 12 degrees of Aquarius. And um, Uranus has been right around 12 degrees of Taurus. I love you guys. I'm also like, I'm going to start using the pregnancy brain excuse too, because that is a thing that is that is beginning to happen, I'm sure. So I want to kick this reading off with a couple of Gateway of Light Activation Oracle cards. What activations, clear, are we receiving during this 1-1 one, one portal, this new moon in Capricorn? What guidance is coming through for us? What initiations? What do we need to know? Who is assisting us? So many questions, right? All right, first card out is Crystal Skull Wisdom. Clarity, divine healing, and high vibrational energy. Interesting. And we know that we are in the process of developing that crystalline light body, right? So there is an incredible amount of clarity coming through for people with this full moon and with this 1-1 one, one portal. And we're going to read that. I'm going to read this for you because these cards are really cool. So it says crystal skulls are said to be to have been healing tools and wisdom keepers in the ancient civilizations of Atlantis and Lemuria. And working with crystal skulls can be a powerful way to harness this energy I'm feeling during the one one and the new moon in Capricorn, especially if you're working with healing. When we talk about those wounds right to our empowerment and things like that, if you're working on healing that for your lineage and ancestral line. Quartz crystal is known for its capacity to amplify energy and store information. When a crystal is carved into a particular shape, it can bring healing and clarity to what it represents and uncover memories that could be essential to revealing truth. Therefore, crystal skulls are wonderful healing tools that bring clarity to the mind and healing to the headspace. And with this Mercury retrograde pre-shadow energy going on, healing in the mind space is going to be probably very desired and needed. This card transports us to an energetic space representing the crystal skull consciousness. It delivers high vibrational frequencies into our energy field so that we can experience clear-mindedness. If you have ever felt called to crystal skulls or have an interest in them, there's a possibility that you have connected with them in a previous incarnation. They are gateways to clarity and potential. All aspects of your life are becoming clearer at this time. Expect to become aware of what you need to step away from and to have a more focused path. You may have felt indecisive, but now you are downloading direct guidance from the heart of source so that you can live and express yourself in a more authentic way. Know that downloads often appear as your own inner guidance encouraging you to move forward. This is why we're learning to trust ourselves, right? The key is to recognize the calmness they bring. This is a time of clarity and connection. Crystal skull downloads are here to bring clarification to what you have been receiving within. In order for the next phase of your journey to unfold, you must follow the information you have received. You, you know what you need to do to heal and grow, right? This is all about us taking that initiative, receiving that clarity, receiving that guidance, and then doing something with it. Guidance is fucking useless if we do not put it into practice, if we don't do anything with it, right? Wisdom is applied knowledge, we can have a head full of knowledge and it's not going to get us anywhere if we're not taking action around it. Uh, let's see here. If you have been asking for a sign that the healing work you have been doing has been successful, trust that this card is the message that you have been waiting for. Beautiful. Sorry, I got a little impassioned there, you guys. It's just so important that we trust the guidance that's coming through and that we take action on it where necessary. I feel like this is sort of like, um, have you guys ever seen those memes where it shows like my guardian angel and then you see how they're just sitting here like this? It's like that's... <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's the energy that I was channeling is just like some of our guardian angels and our guides being like, oh, my God, we sent you the message 50 fucking times. Like, are you what are, are you going to do something about it? Right. Like, oh, my God, they're going back into this loop. We love you. But like we're, we're doing this again. Really? We give we've given you all the tools. It's like that kind of an energy is almost what I feel here. Um, It's sort of like. 
we want to move out of that energy of also that energy of feeling like we want to be rescued right where we are our knight in shining armor right now and we need to know that and remember that next card out seraphim's gateway voice activation angelic attunement and divine support and this card definitely wanted to come out because it was either on the bottom of the deck or I noticed it when I was shuffling and it drew my attention and then it popped out. So we're also going to be receiving a lot of attunements and divine support from the angels, from the angelic realms. Uh, those of you who are connected to the angelic realms, you're going to feel that connection increasing and that's that increased support coming in. You're being attuned with a, with a higher vibrational energy related to uh the angelic realms and um many of you are receiving this voice activation where your voice is going to become an increasingly activating all right and so uh this means that your voice will be an activation tool my voice is an activation tool meaning that when you watch these videos, I'm actually activating you through the sound of my voice as well as sometimes other things that I do, uh, sometimes different movements that I make. Um, you are receiving activations. They are encoded within my voice. And this is not something unique that I do. A lot of people do this. And uh, this, is, this is a gift that many of us have. And so uh, those of us who do, who do hold activation within the sound of our voices and other sounds that we make, whether this is singing, uh, whatever this may be for some people, this is also light language activations where you're going to be channeling light language more powerfully or just beginning to if it's not something that you've done before. Light language is the language of our souls. It comes through in movements. It comes through in song. It comes through in dance. It comes through in words. There are a lot of different ways that it comes through. There are direct transmissions of love from the soul. And they speak to us on a soul level, right? So they by bypass our conscious minds and go right to our super conscious minds. And we absorb what we're meant to from those transmissions. And so some people may find these uh, transmissions spontaneously coming through. Something really interesting that I found about voice activation is that those of us who, who hold activating tones within our voices, we activate ourselves as well. And so what this means is if you listen to the sound of your own voice, you can receive an activation from your own voice, which is pretty cool, right? And you can play around with that as well. So have some fun with that because uh, that's a really powerful um, activation that's coming through for a lot of people and all these other ways as well that we are connected uh, to the to the angelic realms. Like the angels are working big time through this portal for us. And then on the bottom of the deck here, we have Orion activation, supernova, recreation, renewal, rebirthed by light. And that is gorgeous, right? And I am going to read this one for you guys too. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hold that up again because this card is beautiful. They're all beautiful, right? Orion is one of the best known constellations in the sky. Its name is Greek for hunter, and its stars can be seen as a figure with a sword accompanied by a dog, Sirius. At the center of the constellation, three stars, Alnatak, Alnalam, and Mintaka, appear in a belt-like formation. To the south of Orion's belt, there's a nebula that has revealed much about how stars and planetary systems are formed. The best way to describe the space is as a star nursery. During a star's last evolutionary stages, it explodes into a supernova, which provides the perfect space for a new star to be born. The Orion constellation is home to a number of higher beings, many of whom are dedicated to the evolution of our planet. Even though the idea of the constellation being a hunter may make it seem highly masculine, its energies are in fact similar to those of the Lemurians. And its inhabitants therefore honor all beings. The beings of Orion are in fact sacred space holders who help all those with star power and star potential to make the changes required to become the most ascended and aware form of themselves. All your fears and setbacks are being stripped from your energy now. It is essential for your old way of being to fall away and for you to go through a process of renewal in order to move forward. The old stories of your life aren't yours to live out or live up to. You are far greater than these limiting experiences. The beings of Orion are surrounding you now and they see you as one of them. Someone who has been born with the knowledge that they can live with great purpose and make a real difference to the world. 
whether on a global scale or in a particular corner of the planet. When you draw this card, you are being reminded that you have infinite star potential. So our potential being realized, right? This energy of rebirth. This energy of the supernova. So this is really powerful energy. But remember, it talks about how we have to let the old die. We have to let the old go in order for the, for the new to come in. So really, I'm working with the Orions as well. They are here offering their guidance and their wisdom. Uh, let's see. Let's pull one more card. Okay. All right. <laughs> There's a lot coming through here. So we have the solar light upgrade, solar plexus chakra, inner fire, willpower. And we were talking about that, those activations of the solar plexus chakra. So this is great confirmation that those solar plexus, plexus activations are coming through. And this is supporting our willpower. This is supporting our ability to be effective in our lives, to utilize and work with our max, masculine energy to express ourselves creatively, right? And to to gain and maintain and continue to cultivate our cultivate our sovereignty. Let's see. And then the two cards that popped out with the solar light upgrade were the Pleiadian activation coming together harmony in the heavens and resolution and the emerald tablet activation cosmic ordering divine alchemy and conscious manifesting so like we said increasing our power to consciously manifest and create and really bringing this energy of resolution and harmony uh, wherever that resolution and harmony is needed in our lives. Remember, divine alchemy. This is all about shifting. This is all about changing things from one form to another. So what are we alchemizing? We have, assist, we have extra assistance during this portal, helping us to alchemize the energies, to shift the energies that are ready to be shifted. And let's see here. Uh, what do I want to read about um, the Emerald Tablet? We have Thoth coming up here connected with the Emerald Tablet. His energy just showing up everywhere, at least for me personally, which is really interesting. Uh, especially having come back from my trip from Egypt, I feel like uh, Thoth is uh, wanting to be a guide, which is really fun. Uh, he's been coming up a lot in these readings too. When the Emerald Tablet activation card appears, you are being called to remember the gifts you were carrying from previous lifetimes. Even if you don't always understand how to express them, there's a part of you that knows you hold great power within. This is a special time for you to use that power to bring into manifestation all you need for your life to unfold in a way that is in alignment with your best interests. All that has unfolded so far, excuse me, has given you the opportunity to learn and grow, even the unsettling moments. But you are a master alchemist with the capacity to take all that was once challenging and use it to create positive opportunities for yourself. As above, so below. All the thoughts you send up to source will contribute to your evolution on earth. So that's really powerful too. I love this. As above, so below. Working the miracles of one. All things come from the one. Yeah. Emerald tablet said to have been stored in the halls of Amenti under the Great Pyramid. When I read these things, it's really fun too because I wonder how much of these activations I received by being present um, in the Great Pyramid um, as I was. There's just so much, so much energy surrounding that. All right, you guys. I hope that you enjoyed this reading. Uh, really powerfully, powerfully activating time as we move through this 1 1 portal gateway and this new moon in Capricorn. So really allow yourself to be open to these initiations, to these activations. Uh, take that creative control of your own life. Take those constructive actions. Make those constructive choices. Really work with that, with that masculine energy and with that solar plexus energy. And if you need to... Um, Look up some things that you can do to help increase the inner fire, to help increase this solar plexus energy, and really help assist in the cleansing, the purging, and the activating of this solar plexus. Working with yellow crystals, crystals in the yellow ray, the orange ray um, as well, can be helpful. 
uh, working with the energy of fire, the element of fire, right? However it is that you can tap into your creative potential and expression. Tap into that inner fire, right? That fire of passion is what feeds our masculine energy. Our masculine energy is driven by that passion and it is driven to achieve and driven to succeed. So where is it that you are being driven in your life and how can you support and fuel that drive within and how can you take the constructive actions that you're being guided to take and for many of us like we said and this why this is why our guides were kind of um getting a little sassy before right it's like the the steps that we needed to take have been sitting in front of us forever and we just haven't been taking them so if that's the case for you it's time to take those steps it's time to take that action it's time to get that ball rolling right if we sit there and we lean against a giant, imagine like a giant rock, right? And you're trying to push this boulder and you just push it a little bit and then you lay there and you lean against it for a few days and then you push it a little more. It's, it's harder to move than if you go, if you, if you have just a consistent pressure that you're applying, nothing that's too strenuous, nothing that's going to really put you out, but just that little bit of consistent pressure. Um, that little bit of consistent action. We don't have to move mountains, you guys. All we have to do is take a couple steps. I don't know if that makes any sense. Anyway, I love you guys. I appreciate you. You are incredible. Those little steps make all the difference. I guess that's what I want. That's what I want to say. Um, a lot of times we think we have to do it all at once. And if we can't do it all at once, we don't do anything at all. And that's the trap that we get stuck in. So it's all about the, what is that little bit of conscious, consistent effort. Remember, Capricorn's an or earth sign. We're working with that earth energy, which is all about consistency. What is that simple, consistent effort you can take in your everyday life towards your goals, towards your desires? Um, yeah. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Drop a comment down below. If you feel so moved to donate to the channels, there are links below to do that. If you would like to reach out to me, my email is down below. I offer a whole bunch of different services. I offer astrology services. I offer readings. I offer uh, energy healings, all kinds of different things, belief work. Uh, so please reach out to me if you are drawn to my energy, you want to do any one-on-one -on -one work. It is my honor and my privilege to assist you all in that way. So much love for you guys. Like I said, don't miss that one one um, that one one portal live stream with Pete on Empath Uprising on the 1st. Uh, you guys are incredible. Also, the new moon manifesting ceremony will be happening this month. That is going to be happening on the 2nd. And so if you guys want to join that, the information as usual on how to do so is in the description box below. That's going to be at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right. I will talk to you guys soon.